good day, observers. It has been one month since our academic and slightly humorous challenge to Jeffrey Love, the USGS, the world's experts, and all of you. Thus far, the first two have been silent, but not the rest of you. We'll come back to discussion in a moment. This is the solar polar fields data from January to June 20th, 2016. If you're unfamiliar with these charts, please go to spaceweathernews.com challenge. We now have a few more updates to the sun's polar magnetic field strength data, and if there was any doubt before, allow it to be erased. The southern and combined magnetism curves have seen their negative peaks and are heading back towards the central neutral baseline. The two stars denote the negative peaks of those curves and also the two largest earthquakes of the year thus far. Both were magnitude 7.8 that struck Sumatra on March 2nd and then Ecuador in the middle of April, which is also when a deadly magnitude 7 earthquake rocked the southern portion of Japan. The foreshocks of that event were damaging, and when the big one struck, it was a few moments of hell on earth, in many ways as damaging as a much larger quake. So, one could say that the two largest earthquakes, and adding that third from Japan, which was more practically significant than the Sumatra rumble, which was out to sea, and that's the top three seismic events of 2016 thus far at the negative peaks. The northern fields are vastly less powerful than the south and less variable, but two hitches do stand out. A positive peak earlier in the year and a sudden shift in force towards the end as the north continues on its way upward. The asterisks are a couple of days after the actual points of the peak and hitch, respectively, and those are the next two largest earthquakes of the year, magnitude 7.2s in Russia on January 30th and in the South Atlantic on May 28th. So that's the five most important seismic events of 2016 thus far, two most deadly at the Purple Star. How fitting. Do you see what I see? If so, or if you want to see more, Please go to spaceweathernews.com slash challenge, find a brief explanation and some video learning on how the sun and earthquakes are nicely correlated. We believe the sun's magnetic fields that stretch out to the planets can affect the Earth's crust. You can hear a bit more about that and more in an easy version and a more intermediate video version of the challenge. In addition to your sharing on social media, you can now add comments at the bottom of that page as well. We appreciate all the kind words, but we love it when there's some more substance to the comments. Do you see it too? How do you think the trigger mechanism for earthquakes might work? And if you have relevant degrees or position, it is helpful to note that as well. We especially want to see any questions or dissent on the work. Pats on the back don't help us find our weak spots. 20 days until I'm giving up on this casual version of the challenge and opting for something a bit more fun. Jeffrey Love, USGS, I've asked for one email. I have sent plenty to experts around the world and I've been putting this information out there for years. The next interaction should really come from you. You can ignore this material, but you can't stop the model from being confirmed from every angle you look. The Suspicious Observers is not like the masses of internet loons who freak out over satellite artifacts or the yearly melted road at Yellowstone. We're not fantasizing about some incoming planet that seems to fool people across the internet every single year, and we're not sitting here saying you have made a single mistake. There is just one thing you haven't looked at, however, and we are not just going to go away. This is the best available high-quality scientific data available to inform the mission of the USGS. This material is ready to be communicated clearly, honestly, objectively, thoroughly, and accurately, but it has not been done so in a timely manner. This material relates to the protection of natural and cultural resources, and to ignore it is a conflict of interest for everyone in the department when the material and my time helping out are free of cost. Just ask. Please separate the facts from any personal opinions you have about me, or your assumptions, hypotheses, or conclusions regarding solar influence seismicity. This information is now in the public realm and is the property of the people. We will make no attempt to patent a method or make any other intellectual property on this science. Either way, the USGS and Dr. Love need to step up. Either this subject merits further investigation, or this is getting out of hand and someone should really put me in my place before it goes any further. I'm just one email away.